Hello guys, my name is Zach and today I'm going to be talking you through my top tips of automotive photography. Interesting parts of the car that what make the best photos. Okay, so these interesting parts are pretty much anything in the car. It could be a headlight, spotlight, badge, particular angle, the wheel, anything. I'm going to insert a couple of video pictures so you'll be able to see examples of where I've used the most interesting parts of cars to really enhance my images of the car. Okay, number two is think about the backgrounds. We all have those photos that where the background has ruined the shot. For example, here I have this nice TNT van, a bright orange big spot in the back of the photo. We also have a couple of parked cars, with some nasty fences and bins. I'm not sure if that comes up on the camera, but there are actually wheelie bins on the car. So it's about trying to find a location much as anything where your pictures aren't going to be ruined by things you haven't seen in the background. All right, I'll cue his leaving. Okay, so now that he's left, you can see that the picture is much more full in the background. We've got a nice, simple, clean horizon, apart from the obvious parked cars and bins and fence on the side. Another important about the location is to do with the reflections on the car. You want it so the light is at the right angle that it doesn't reflect you onto the car. I've had plenty of images where me being on the car, and although I like to think I'm good looking, it's never a good point for a photo. The next part is about photographing interiors. This is mostly helpful with classic cars, however on modern cars they do have a couple of quirks that you can exploit in order to create the best photos. In classic cars you want to focus on where. This tells a story about the car as well as how it's been treated and shows its age. On a modern car like this you want to be trying to capture what we as humans interact with. Examples can be anything. The steering wheel, if there's anywhere on a classic car steering wheel. Especially older cars where they have a wooden rim steering wheel which is also extremely characterful. The gauges also tell a massive story about the car. Older cars have, tend to have more like stylish, amazing gauges whereas modern cars are pr pretty simple. Gear lever, that's always a good one. It shows that the car has been driven if it's worn. Any sort of like carbon trim is also lovely on the exotic cars. My car only has a piano black trim but nevertheless it can be good for photos. Okay, another tip is to focus on craftsmanship. Cars are only built by machines nowadays, at least that's the case for most cars. Cars such as Aston Martins and other exotic cars are hand built, including hand stitched leather. Focus on this to exploit the most beautiful craftsmanship on your photos. Another tip is to develop your own style. Now we've all had phases where we go through bad photos, good photos, and some we look back and just think, what the hell are we doing? The aim as a photographer is to grow yourself and to grow a style that people are going to love because it's individual to you. You can do this by making lots of mistakes. Mistakes are perfect as a photographer because you learn how to rectify and edit them out. And even if you can't edit them, you won't make the same mistake next time. I want it to be almost as if it was taken at the time. Therefore, 
I go for some sort of like sepia or black and white type photos, high contrast and a bit of grain. So it really takes you back to the 1960s, 70s or 80s, depending on the colours you've got. A car like this, I like to leave quite natural with the backgrounds. Another important part of the is to create the depth of the lens. What I like to do is I like to use quite a high power zoom lens, 300mm. I make the car the primary focus and get the black background to blur out. This for me highlights the car towards the background and makes it a much more interesting photo to look at. It really pops the colour of the car if you add a little bit of saturation afterwards with a paintbrush or something like that on the Photoshop. As well as this we can also do lights such as the indicators. Yeah. We can even add a bit of saturation to the glass to get, allow the reflections to come through if that's what you want. One last bonus tip If you have any more questions about something that I haven't covered in this video, please comment below. Otherwise, you can contact me on Instagram at IJSAP or email me through IJSAutomotive Photographer at gmail.com. Thanks very much for watching. Have a good day.